Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to install Oracle 19c on Linux and also after installation of the Oracle software we will learn how to create a database. This particular tutorial is performed on VirtualBox 6.1, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5, Oracle 19.3 or we call it as Oracle 19c. B the softwares that are required here is we need to download Oracle 19C for Linux and SQL Developer. These are the two softwares that we will need to download for this particular tutorial to work. These are the high level steps. So you will need to install the necessary packages. You will create the users for Oracle software such as Oracle uh, user and the O install. In my case, I'm not using O install. I'm using a separate user group which you will come to know at a later point in time create the necessary directories for installation of oracle home and oracle base so we will create the necessary directories download and install the pre-install package so we will be installing pre-install 21c and the question that you will ask me is when we are installing the 19c software why are we installing the oracle 21c pre-install package and the reason for that is oracle has not launched the pre-install package for for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. So for 19C version, there is no pre-installed package for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. Set kernel parameters or let Oracle do it. So basically we will need to set some kernel parameters. And the beauty is the pre-installed package sets the kernel parameters for us. And hence we do not have to do this manually. Unzip the software on Linux target server as Oracle user. So the software that we have downloaded wherever you want to install whichever linux server that you want to install unzip that software and remember when you want to unzip that software you have to unzip that as a oracle user once that is done run the run installer as oracle user to install the database home open linux terminal and type netca netca will allow you to create the listener Open Linux terminal and type dbca and dbca will allow you to create your database. Now, here is the point that I want to make. You do not have to create the listener if you are going to use the dbca because the dbca allows you to create the listener. Now, you can also create the listener after creating the database. That is also fine. However, if you create the listener before and when you launch run the dbca, that time you can specify that please use this listener. So the again dbca will also allow you to create a listener so if you have not created a listener before you can use the dbca to create your listener now these are the optional test uh, steps so if you want to test the connectivity you can use a software called sql developer that we have already downloaded the sql developer will allow you to test the connectivity and if you if you want to know what is netca and dbca the netca stands for oracle net configuration assistance on net NETCA that's how the NETCA and DBCA for database configuration assistant NETCA allows you to create listener and does many more, more things DBCA allows you to create database and many more things now we are not interested in other functionalities we will be using NETCA to create listener we, we will be using the DBCA to create the database let's now the first step as I mentioned download the Oracle 19c for Linux and download SQL developer to download Oracle 19C for Linux and for SQL developer you need an Oracle account if you do not have an Oracle account you can create a free Oracle account it is not chargeable to create that Oracle account you can use your existing email ID to sign up for Oracle account launch your favorite let's copy this launch your favorite browser I am using Firefox so let's search for download Oracle 19C for Linux and we will get this link. You will have to sign in. I have already signed in using my account. You can, you if you do not have an Oracle account, as I mentioned, create a free account using your existing email ID. Now, we can use the RPM method. It works fine. However, we will be using the DB Home method. So this is the method that we'll be using. Click on this box, the download box, accept the license, click on the download. This particular software, if everything goes fine, the software will be downloaded and this particular software is close to 2.8 GB. I have already downloaded this, so I'm not going to re-download this particular software. Now, the second software that I have mentioned is download SQL developer. So search for download SQL developer 
and again it gives you this link and you choose JDK 11 included. If you already have JDK installed on your machine, probably you want to choose another one. But if you do not have the JDK installed, then you might want to choose this. Again, right click on this download button, accept, click the accept the license and download SQL Developer. And again, that starts downloading. This software is 444 MB. Again, I have downloaded this particular software, so I'm not going to download this. So that's all done. The I'm good to close my Firefox browser. My work in the browser is done because all that we needed to do in the browser is download those two software and that's done. Now, the next part is we will connect to our let's let's connect to our box, our server. So I got let's OK, so I cannot connect as Oracle user because Oracle user is not even cre created. So let's do this. So I have connected to my Linux server. Let me show you before doing anything that this is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. This is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. And right now I am logged in as a root user. Now, the first thing that we'll be doing is we are going to create the user. So let's let's see if we have an existing user, ID Oracle, no such user. So what we need to do is we need to create a group and we need to add that particular user oracle user into this particular group now point that i want to make is that it's an extra group that i'm adding this particular group is only for the virtual box if in your production environment you don't need to add to this particular group this is only specific to virtual box this particular group allows the oracle user to access the shared folders hosted like from the window so i do not have to do the win scp or something like that i can directly access my folders from my virtual box from my Linux server. So that's why I'm adding this. This you may not need to do in your production environment. So the steps are creating the user, sorry, creating the group, creating the user and changing the password. I'm going to do all of that together. So let's do that. Let's hit the group add done, user add done, password done. And now if I run the first command ID Oracle, you can see we have a user called Oracle in a group called DBA and another group called VirtualBox Asset. Now, in your production environment, you might want to use O install group. So Oracle recommends to use O install. Again, it is not mandatory. You don't need to have O install. You can have your custom groups. So this is all customization. Like, you know, I just wanted to show you that O install is not something that is mandatory. You can have any group and you can also have any user. So that's all fine. So now I have got a user called Oracle and it's in the group called DBA. So the first part is done, the user ID. And now the second thing that I want to mention is you might need to install some necessary packages. Again, you might need to install zero packages. You might need to install 10 packages or you might need to install hundreds of packages. And it's all based on the fact that what, how you have installed your base OS. So what packages you installed before? When you try to install the Oracle software, it will prompt that this particular package is missing. This particular, it's going to check the prerequisites. So it's always better. On my system, only these four packages it needs. This is the first, fifth package. This particular package will be used for the Xmin. So I'm, I'm going to do this over the remote display and hence I'm going to install the Xterm package. But you need only the four packages. So now, now we are ready to install all of those five packages. So let's do that. I'm going to use yum install. Yum install needs the repository setup. You might you might need to understand how this works. So I have I have I'm it's it's connected to the repository and it's actually downloading all of these particular five packages. And if everything goes fine, then all the five packages will be installed and looks like everything is success. So I have installed all the necessary packages that are required. So that's all done. The next part is the next part is installing the pre-install package. Now, the pre-install package needs the internet connectivity to your box. It needs an internet connectivity to your box. Now, the uh, just I do not believe I actually have the internet connectivity. Give me a minute. So I've checked if I have got the internet connectivity and looks like my box is set up too. Okay, so it's not connecting. Just give me a minute. Okay, so sometimes it's getting connected, sometimes it's not. So maybe some there is a delay. That's all good. So internet connectivity is there. LS minus L and you can see I do not have any RPM package. I'm going to use what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the curl command to download the 
Oracle 21C pre install package and I'm going to do that and if all goes fine if this gets connected to the internet then I should be able to head and it's it's got connected so you can see I now I did not have the pre install package and you can see I got the pre install package before installing the pre install package before installing the pre install package I'm going to show you something so I'm going to minimize this I'm going to keep this here and what I'm going to do is I am actually I'll go to a directory and I'll show you that I do not have any kernel parameter. So if I do ls minus l here under the limits dot under the etc security limits dot d and if you can see I do not have any particular file. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to install this particular pre install package and see what exactly happened. So that I started the installation. So let's wait for the installation to complete. Give it a minute. Let's wait for the installation to complete. Let's wait. And once the installation is completed, which is done, and if I now do ls minus l, you can see a file appeared here. And if I now let's let me maximize that screen for a minute. And if I now clear the screen and get that particular file, then you can see it has set all of these variables for the Oracle user. So it has set all of these kernel parameters for the Oracle user. I have not done it. I have not manually set these kernel parameters the oracle pre-install package has done this oracle pre-install package does many other things such as creating an oracle user creating the groups etc etc but since the oracle user already exists it's not going to override that user so the pre-install package does the pre-work for us now one of the things that it doesn't do is it doesn't add this particular entry in the security limits.conf file so what, what we are going to do is like we are going to manually add that entry so i'm going to do the vi go down and add that entry manually so i'm going to do this once that is done i'm going to verify that that particular entry is in the file so i'm going to do the tail and you can see i got oracle soft tech 10240 so that's all good so i have set this entry so the kernel parameter part is done the kernel parameter was actually set using the pre-install package the pre-install package that did most of the work and once the kernel the pre-install package we also added this particular limit for the oracle user in the security limits.com file so that's all good now we come to the part where we are going to create the directories now the directories for the oracle software you in your production environment you might see u01 app product the version etc etc now I'm not using that I am using my own directory structure and why am I doing this I wanted to show you I want to show you and I want you to understand that the the recommended Oracle directory structure that's the recommendation you can install Oracle wherever you want wherever you want you can have your Oracle binary home so it's your choice now what I've done here is I'm going to create two directories under the Oracle. So DBI Oracle, this is the subdirectory and under this sub subdirectory, there will be two directories. This becomes the Oracle base. This becomes the Oracle home. Oracle home is the location where you will have all the binaries and executables and base will have audit log, alert log, etc, etc. Now, since the root is going to create these directories, I'm changing the permission to 777. I'm changing the ownership to Oracle DBA group for these two particular directories. So now let me explain. So there will be two directories. One is V19 database that becomes your Oracle home. V19 base database that becomes your Oracle base. These particular two directories are automatically uh, like we will create them and we will assign this as a oracle base oracle home and this particular directory is where your software is installed this particular directory is the some logs and other things will be stored in this particular directory so let's let's create all of that together so let's run so i have this particular directory already exists so i'm not going to do that i'm going to take all of this and i'm going to hit the enter so i'm going to connect to my putty session so let's do that let's clear the screen and what I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this in center. I do not need this particular another session. I'm going to close it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit all of this. And you can see under DBI slash Oracle, I got two directories, V19 database. This becomes my Oracle home. V19 base database becomes my Oracle base. So these are the two directories. Again, Oracle base, Oracle home. Oracle home is the directory where your software will be installed. Oracle base is for other 
directories so all good so we have we have created the directories so that's all good so now we are at the step where we are going to install the oracle software as oracle user remember remember this very important you have to install the oracle software as oracle user and you also have to unzip the software as oracle user do not unzip the software as a different user or a root user you will you will end up with the wrong permissions and sometimes the installer might not work so unzip the software as oracle user run the run installer as oracle user and here i can clearly i mentioned it as oracle user as oracle user so unzip as oracle user run the run installer as oracle user and this is the directory which will become the oracle home and i'm going to unzip the software directly into this directory using the unzip command so let's get on to that let's let me do something let me go to this particular directory in my main session let's verify if i have got anything here so let's pwd ls minus l and absolutely nothing what i'm going to do i'm going to connect to the put the server into another session and what i'm going to do i'm going to navigate to that particular directory so let's let me go to that particular directory where my oracle software is stored so this is the location where my oracle software is stored and if i show you ls minus l you can see oracle 19c enterprise linux software and what i'm going to do is i'm going to unzip that particular software and let's run that particular command and that's happening and now if i go here you can see the unzip has started now and this particular software is close to 2.8 gb the unzip utility is going to take some time it will take some time to unzip this particular software so let's and you can see it has un, un extracted little more file but it is still not finished so if i go to the second session you can see the unzip command is still running now the file that i wanted to show you is the okay let me clear this so under the oracle home so this becomes the oracle home and under the oracle home we got under the again okay, let me repeat under the oracle oh i i made a mistake actually i made a mistake i explained this that you should extract the software as oh okay okay i have connected okay i thought i'm connected as a root user so i connected as an oracle user so i thought i connected as a root user and unzip the software but no i connected as an oracle user and i'm unzip unzipping the software that's good i do not need the root session i'm going to close this and i'm going to connect to or as an oracle user so i sh because all of the next actions will be as oracle user so the unzip is happening now let me go to the oracle home so cd slash dbi slash oracle slash v19 database and under this you can see all of these directories now what i'm going to show you is there will be one file called run installer so this particular directory this this is the executable and this particular executable we will be using to actually install our software so this particular the database home will be installed using the run installer the unzip is completed so that means i do not need this session i'm going to close this and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do some trick actually so what i'm going to do is i under the oracle home under the oracle home you will find a file called bash rc under the oracle home you will find a file called bash rc and i'm going to modify that particular file the vi bash rc and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set some variables related to oracle software so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the v oracle base add the oracle home i'm going to add the load library path class path etc etc and also i'm going to add the display port export display this so if i put all of this in the in the in the bash rc i do not have to whenever i want to run the xming i do not have to export the display so i'm going to do this i'm going to copy this and i'm going to add this particular lines in my bash rc file this this particular and now we need to reload the bash rc so instead of reloading it the, the way you have to reload it you have to say dot dot bash rc to reload the file instead of doing that so what what i can show you is if i do echo dollar oracle home it should be empty we have not set this particular variable now if i reload that particular file the bash rc that's done and if i now run the echo dollar home you can see that particular variable is set and how that particular variable got set is because we mentioned that particular variable in the batch rc this particular profile is it makes your life easier it will make my life easier because you can run the oracle command 
without setting the Oracle environment. So now if you had the software, if you had a DBCA, you can just type DBCA and it should launch. However, that won't work right now because we have we have not at run the run installer. So let's let's close this. Let's open one more put this session. Let's clear the screen. Let's verify. Let's verify that our Oracle home is set and it should be set. Oracle home is set. Let's verify our base is set. That's set. We are now at the step where we are going to install the software. So let's go to the v19 database this is the this is my oracle home you can see this is my oracle home i am in the oracle home and under this oracle home you will find a directory executable called run installer and we are going to use the run installer using the oracle user to install our software using the oracle user remember using the oracle user and it has it has it has launched this xming for us and you know actually it actually ended up with a warning it says it is not supported os so what so did i waste your time like you know i have been explaining that we will install 19c on 8.5 and looks like 19.c is not supported on 8.5 does it mean i was just wasting your time no actually no we can install 19c on 8.5 and the way I'm going to do that and the way it is to be done is actually we need to tell Oracle that this is not 8.5. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this and I'm going to run this export command and I'm going to show you what it is actually. So before running that, let me clear the screen and let me say host name CTL and you can see that this is 8.5. But what I'm saying is do not think this is 8.5 think like this is oel 7.8 so i'm telling this that assume that this is oracle enterprise next 7.8 so i'm going to do that and then i'm going to run the same command again run installer and this time we should not get that warning and you can see now i have not got that and warning and i'm not now on the second page so looks like looks like i have i was able to tell oracle that this is not 8.5 this is 7.8 now that's all good so now let's let's understand we have two options here first option allows you to set set up the software and at the same time create the instance or create the database so it allows us to so when you choose this particular option you will have to specify multiple options now what other the second option is set up the software only so if you want to just install the software and create the database at a later point in time you will choose the option two whatever option you choose it's your choice there is no hard and fast rule that you have to go with option one option two if if you do not know what database to be created let go with set option number two because you will just install the software if you know what database needs to be created go with option number one both option works fine so click on next it will ask you whether you want to go for let's actually not do this let's actually it's too big so let's put it in the center yeah this looks good so yeah, i'm going to make it a little bit yeah so single instance uh, database so do you want to go for single instance database or rack my box is not set up for the rack so i cannot use rack even if i choose the rack it won't work so let's go with single instance click on next enterprise edition se2 based on what license you have you will choose either enterprise edition or se2 i'm choosing enterprise edition that's all good you can see that the oracle based directory is pre-populated oracle based directory is pre-populated and how did that work and again we added the entry for oracle base so if i launch another session and if i clear the screen and if i say echo dollar oracle base you can see that this is the value that oracle software has picked up so this particular this that means my life becomes easier your life becomes easier because the every time you do not have to type that value you don't have to browse that particular directory because it back gets picked up from the bash rc so setting this particular if you have multiple oracle homes then probably you do not want to set it up but if you are working with single home then you can set it up or if you are working with a particular home uh, for like quite frequently rather than other homes you can set it up and that should not be a problem now that this is all good so i'm going to click on next the aura inventory it has pre-populated aura inventory owner group is dba i'm go okay with that click on next and i'm not i'm going to keep all of this groups to the same group so all of this will be owned by the same group now in your environment you might want to use o install or you might want to based on your security standard 
in your organization you might want to use a different group and it's fine so different group for each and every particular role is particularly fine so i'm using the group called dba and that will be used for all and that should be fine that will work so now you you can see here it says automatically run the configuration scripts or use if i if i say automatically run it you you want either you have to give the sudo if oracle has got the sudo access you have to give the oracle password uh or if you want to give use the root credential you have to give the root password and now what it does is like the setup needs you to run two scripts as a root user two scripts as a root user and if you say if you give the password if you say automatically run and if you give the password here you do not have to manually run the scripts still the software is still going to prompt you for that but you don't have to manually log in as a root and run those particular software uh, scripts so your life becomes easier my life becomes easier if i choose this particular option however i'm not going to choose this particular option because i want to show you what are those two scripts so i'm going to uncheck this all good click on next and now it's going to do all of the checks it fails on swap size i do not have that much powerful machine it's okay to ignore this particular warning so i'm going to ignore this particular warning again oracle is going to say that you know the oracle may not work properly and all of that and that is because of this website we are ignoring this particular warning and oracle doesn't want us to ignore this warning again this particular website can be changed at a later point in time so it's not end of the world it's not end of the world we can change it at a later point in time yeah we can change this particular value at a later point in time so you know even if you go if you accept this particular warning and it gives you this may impact product configuration and if you accept this particular warning and if you proceed it's going to work and you can fix it at a later point in time so there is no problem for this particular warning so click on yes it gives you this summary we are installing enterprise edition we are just setting up the software we are not going to create a database this is your oracle base this is your oracle home these are your groups this is root script we are not using the automatic which means we will be doing the manually we will be executing those two scripts manually where is your aura inventory and who is the owner of your aura inventory if you want to save the response file of the installation you can save it for the future or if you don't want to save it that's fine and click on the install and now the installation has started the installation might take few seconds to few minutes to few hours based on how powerful is your machine if you have significantly less amount of memory and significantly less number of cores or if your cpu speed is pretty bad then it might need a longer time on my machine it takes few seconds so i'm not going to pause this i'm going to wait for it to prompt because now it's going to prompt me to run those two scripts as a root user so let me before it even prompts me let me launch the session as a root user and now what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm going to tell you something that that those two scripts has to be run as a root user these are the two scripts it has prompted and you can see here it clearly says this script needs to be executed as a root user this script needs to be executed as a root user and now what what we can do is like we if i try to execute this particular script as an oracle user so let's let's lo log in as an oracle user and let's try to run that particular script and it's going to fail the script must be executed as a root so you cannot execute this particular script as a non root user now again you can run this particular script as a sudo user sudo is fine sudo will work but if you do not have the sudo then you will have to log in as a root user so let me exit now i'm back as a root user you can see i'm root user and now if i run the script that actually we try to run and it failed this time it worked fine so first script done and now we are going to execute the second script and that should also it prompts you for this and that should also work so that's all good so we have done that and now we can click ok the registration of oracle database was successful which means we have successfully installed the oracle database software on oracle 19c sorry oracle 19c on reddit enterprise linux 8.5 what, what was i saying okay so let me repeat what i said we have successfully installed oracle 19c on reddit enterprise linux 8.5 now here is the thing stop before we proceed oracle 19.3 is not supported on relate enterprise linux 8.8.5 we saw that warning and to we we did something to to get around that warning but that's not correct what you need to do now is you need to apply the latest patch so i believe it is 19.8 
from where it is the oracle is supported on relate enterprise Linux. so let apply the any patches from eight or anything which are released at a later point in time so apply the latest patches and you should be good and this and then once you apply the latest patches oracle will support you if you do not install the latest patches oracle will not support you in case of any issues because this particular configuration is not supported now now that we have understood that we have to now apply the patch i'm not going to do that because i do not have the patches so i'm not going to do that so that's fine and we are going to create the database and all of that and that should work fine so let's let's close this this is all done let's close this so at this moment at this moment understand very well that we do not have the database all that we have done is we have just installed the software we have just installed the software we have we have not at created the database so the next part next step in my tutorial is create the database so to create the database we'll be launching the dbca now before doing that what i also mentioned what i also mentioned is you you create the listener first using the net ca and then create the database now if i type net ca on my machine it should work it should work fine if i type net ca and the reason for that is again the bash rc that we said remember the bash rc that we said that allows us to play with this environment pretty well i can just type net ca and it's going to launch the net ca the net ca stands for net configuration assistant now where are this directory where are this where is that net ca if you want to know where is that you have to go to oracle home slash bin if you go to this particular location and if you say ls minus l net ca you should be able to find that there is a executable called net ca again if you want to locate the dbca you will find that dbca is also under the same directory now however i don't have to be in this directory i can type net ca from wherever so now i'm under the home oracle and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say i'm going to say net ca and that should work fine and you the net ca it allows us to create a listener and you know other changes so it, it basically it allows us to do the networking for part of the database so we are going to go with listener configuration click on next do you want to add a listener click on next default listener will be listener default listener will be listener and again you can change it it's not mandatory that you have to use the default listener name you can change it and what i'm going to do is you can you can leave this as as it is there is no harm in using the default listener name however i'm going to change it i'm, I'm going to say ls and our v19 why this and i'm going to use the v19 because this particular listener is used with oracle 19 so i want to use this particular listener for all the oracle 19 c databases that's why i use this name again you can use whatever name you can use your name to create a listener that should be perfectly fine click on next these are the protocols v tcp i interpret process communication tcps protocol so basically we are going to stick with the default protocol click on next use the standard port so by default oracle listens on 1521 i'm not going to say 1521 i'm going to say 1529 again 9 for oracle 19c i'm going to do that and why i'm doing this i'm just wanted to show you that everything can be changed you don't have to stick with default values click on next click on next and all done so now we have a listener ready now we have a listener ready now what you can see the listener is also started so it says listener started successfully let's verify Let's verify whether the listener is up and running and how do i verify if the listener is up and running you will use the command lsnrctl status now this command is going to fail this command is going to fail and the reason for that is because it looks for the default listener called listener it looks for a default listener called listener and we do not have the default listener that listener that we created is lsnr v19 so you can see it says no listener because it cannot find that listener so now what we are going to do we are going to modify this command and this time what we are going to skew is we are going to give the name of the listener lsnr v19 and this time it should work fine and now what i'm going to also explain you that this name of the listener can be in the small case or it can be in upper case and it doesn't matter it will pick up it will pick up the same listener so you can see we have got a listener it started 58 seconds before and it is listening on a port 1529 so all good our listener configuration is all good so we have a listener right now configured on our machine now the point i want to make here is you do not have to do the net ca 
if you are using the dbca the dbca allows you to create the listener it allows you to create the listener so this particular step was completely op optional and the command that we used the command that we used to look at our listener is lsnr city also listener control status you can use the start stop reload there are other options here so you can use other options but the option that i used is status and i said give me the status of this listener and then it gave me the list status of this listener it gave me how long it is up which oracle home it is and you know which port it is listening so that's all good now we are at the position now we are at the position where we are going to create our database using the dbca so let's enter dbca and it's going to launch this particular nice screen red color oracle 19c create a database let's minimize this create a database and we are going to create our first oracle database using the dbca so what i i typed dbca i typed dbca and it's going to create the database now before creating the database what i'm going to do is i'm going to set some directories i'm going to set some directories where is where is my oracle data file so make directory dbd slash aura data and under aura data i'm going to say sorry aura 19c under this i'm going to create my directory and i'm going to also create a subdirectory called fra that's done so now i have got dbd slash aura data slash aura 19c so if i go to that particular directory you can see i got only the one directory called fra we, because and that fra is again empty so fra is also empty now this particular directory and this is actually incorrect you should never place fra in the same location as your database files fra stands for fast recovery area and you should actually have fra in a different location never in the same location it should be on a different disk different file system should not be on the same file system so remember that this is personal lab this is lab this is okay but in your production environment fra needs to be on a dedicated disk in a different file system remember that remember it well fra should not be on the same file system as your data files now that you have understood that let's go and create a database click on next and it gives us all of this where is where you want to stay store your database files where you want to have your fra what is your character set what is your admin password do you want to create a container database and oracle 19c allows us to create the oracle 19c is the last version that allows us to create a non-cdb database architecture and hence i'm going to choose that we will see the cdb sometime later but i'm going to stick with non-cdb and we will say we'll give the name of our database so the name of the database that i want to create is aura 19c this is the name of the database that i want to create and uh, did i actually gave it in the small letter so let's let's do this let's create it in the small letter our 19c and database file location so let's create give the location dbd slash or data slash or 19c let's give the location of fra again dbd slash or data slash or 19c slash fra remember you should never place fra in the same location this is actually incorrect this is lab so this should be fine and i'm going to press the enter the password i'm going to put the password very simple password now this password can be changed at a later point in time so this is completely fine this password can be changed at a later point in time so this is completely fine but if you are doing this in your production environment you can you can set a simple password and change at a later point in time or you can start with a complicated password now oracle is not going to like this particular password it prompts me here when i say next it's again going to prompt me and i'm i'm i understand this because i can change this at a later point in time and this is okay with me so let me click are you sure you want to continue let me click yes yeah so basically you can see a nice little summary it allows us to look at and if you are okay if you are okay with all of this you can hit the finish button and it's going to create the database now what i'm not what i'm going to do is i'm not going to choose this particular option you can see there is something called advanced configuration and why am i choosing this particular option because this particular option allows us to see a lot of other parameters that we did not see here so it allows us to modify so many other things and 
in your production environment you might want to modify and again it's not, you you whatever the options that it shows on the advanced configuration you can you can change all of them at a later point in time so you can just stick with typical configuration create a database and change it at a later point in time but you need to know how to change it so when advanced if when oracle allows us to look at it and understand what options to select it makes your life easier it makes my life easier so let's go with advanced configuration click on next and it allows us to say oracle single instance database it whether you want to create custom database oltp database or data warehouse database we are going to stick with oltp it also prompts us to whether you want to rack database or rack one node database i do not have this particular box is not set up to support rack neither rack one node so i cannot create i, I even if i choose this option is not going to work so let me stick with single instance let me stick with oltp click on next the the global database name or on IDC. this we all we entered all of these variables values at the beginning so it's going to pick up those values i'm okay with this name where i want to store my database i want to store my database files under this particular directory i'm okay with it if you want to use omf you can use omf if you don't want to use omf uncheck this it both is fine click on next if you want fra and where you want to fra and what should be your fra size if you have 8 GB of FRA uh, size, you can mention. If you have bigger, you can mention 8 GB is fine. And uh, you know, uh, and we can change it at a later point in time. It's not like you cannot change all of these things. Most of these things can be changed. Some things cannot be changed, such as database name, etc., etc. But most of the things can be changed. So enable archiving. You can, if you want to change the database to archive log, you can choose this particular option. If you don't want to change it, again, you can enable the archiving at a later point in time. So you can uncheck this and change it at a later point in time. So click on next listener. And this is very important. This is a listener that we created using the next CA and Oracle recognized, discovered that listener and it recognized and it says, I want to use this checkbox automatically. It's selected. Now, I mentioned this before. The DBCA allows you to create a listener. So if I uncheck this and if I say create a new list, new listener, I can give any name here, anything that I want and any port which is currently not used. And I can hit the next and Oracle is going to create a new listener for me. So it's not mandatory to create a listener using NetCA. You can, you could create the listener using DBCA. That's what I was mentioning. So I'm going to not, I, I'm not going to use that option because we have already created a listener. I'm going to use the same listener. Click on next. Database Vault, Oracle Label Security. I'm not interested on these features. Let's let's leave it. The what should be your SGA? What should be PGA? This is a pretty important setting for your database in a performance or for your performance. Sizing SGA and PGA incorrectly will give you lots of problems. Now again, these values can be changed at a later point in time. So if you you can start with a lower value and as and when more applications or more users connect to your database you can gradually increase these particular values so what i'm and again what i'm going to do is like i'm going to say 2048 and 1024 i'm going to say 2 gb of sga and 1 gb of pga and what i can also do is i can specify this in gb and tb i do not have tb of memory so i'm going to say gb and i'm going to instead of 2048 i'm going to say 2 and instead of 1024 i'm going to say 1 gb so that's all done sizing 320 processes all good character sets if you want to change the character set based on the your application needs or based on where you are located you might want to change your character set connection mode dedicated or shared server so you know you can you can have your connection mode and sample schemas if you want to have hr etc other sample schemas you might want to check, check that box so all done click on next if you want to register your database with em if you want to do that you can click yes again you can register it with the em at a later point in time so that should be fine i'm going to i'm not going to choose that option the these are the this is the password that we entered in the beginning password password oracle again says that he the oracle is not happy with this particular password it is giving me this warning and i'm going to say okay when i click next again it's going to say it does not meet its standards and these particular passwords can be changed at a later point in time. So I'm starting with a, I'm starting with a very simple password which can be changed at a later point in time. So let's click S, create a database. Click next if you want to change some of the storage location, and if you want to change some of the initialized parameters, you can change it by choosing this. I'm not going to do that. Click on next, 
and it gives us all of this summary and if you are happy if you if everything looks good everything looks good then you can save the response file the response file allows you to create your database in the silent mode you don't have to run the gui you can just set this response file and you can just run the database dbca command to create your database uh, in the silent mode so this you can save the response file and you can if you do not have save the response file you can definitely get the response file from the internet so it's not like you don't but i'm going to save it that's done and i'm going to click the finish and right now on my system the database creation has started now immediately what i'll do is like i'll go to that particular location i do not know whether i should go very quickly uh, i should go very quickly and see uh myself and you can see i was quick enough sorry i thought i will not be quick enough so if you can see that this particular directory this is the directory where, that we said that this is the directory that we said will be your database file so all the system table space sysox table space undo table space temp table space users table space redo logs will be under this particular directory now i'm waiting for this let's run the ls minus l command and you can see the first data file system data file for the system table space appeared and it's, it's going to run the oracle database creation in the background and it's going to create all of those files for me now the oracle database software you can now what you can do is like what if you can use you can see here there are two files one is the dbca log and one is the database alert log you can use these two files to see what oracle is doing so you can use this so you can launch another putty session i'm going to launch another putty session i'm going to keep this on this side i'm going to keep this on this side and what i'm going to do is i'm going to clear this no i don't have to clear the screen because all that i'm doing is the tail minus f so let's do this let me copy this and if i say tail minus f and if i follow that particular file you can see what the dbca is doing and if you if this is the database alert log and i'm going to say tail minus f the alert log file and you can see what it is doing so you can use these two files to understand what oracle is doing behind the scenes and you can you, you know if there are there is any error if something the dbca says or you got an error and the dbca is not giving you if you click details here see this the information is not very clear so but the the dbca log and the database alert log is pretty detailed so if if something doesn't work if the dbca just gives throw some error and if you are not able to figure out what exactly happened you can refer to dbca log or if you can refer to the database alert log and understand what actually went wrong and you can fix that particular error so now that you know the database creation is going to take some time is you can see this dbca log and the alert log is moving it's going to take some time let me pause the video and come back once the database is created so as you can see the database creation complete the database name sid is aura 19c this is the sp file etc etc and all looks good so i do not need all of this log locations so i'm going to close this i do not need this and i do not need dbca because the dbca has created our database successfully all good so let's close this now what what i'm going to do is now that you know i'm going to show you under under my main directory so clear under my aura data aura 19c ls minus l we can see three redo log files one control file one sysox one system one temp table temp file one undo and one users data file now if i go to fra and under fra there will be a subdirectory with the database name and under that subdirectory you can see we have the second control file automatically created so this second control file Oracle decided to place it one under the main and one under the FRA. And if FRA is on a different location, if it's on a different file system, then if anything happens to this file system, then you will still have a second control file. The control file is pretty important for your Oracle database. And hence, Oracle database decides that we should keep one in main and one in the FRA. And Oracle chose this particular option. I did not specify this particular option. I only said that this is my FRA. So now that we have understood this the database is created so what i how to connect to your database to 
connect to database using the SQL plus, you'll say dot aura env. Aura env says we are setting the Oracle environment and it prompts us for the Oracle SID. And now you can see in bracket, it gives me this value. And do you know why does it give me this value? Again, it's the magic of my bash RC. In the bash RC, this particular variable is set to and if you want to change it you can change it and if you want to if you don't want to change it and if you are okay with it just hit the enter and that should be fine now to connect your database you will say sql plus as sysdba if you if you want to connect as a different user you will say as a different user so you can you will choose whatever user you want to choose to connect your database here i have connected as sysdba and now if i look at select name from v dollar database you can see that i am connected to database called aura 19c now if i say show user you will be able to see that the current user is sys user so the sys user is connected as sys dba to my current database now if you are not familiar with sql plus if you are not familiar with the command line and you just wanted to create a table or do the application development you can very well do that using SQL developer. So we launch we now if you are just started to learn Oracle, you may not be comfortable with SQL plus. So we I mentioned, you know, optionally we can use SQL developer. We have already downloaded that. So you have to extract that particular software. So I've already extracted that particular software. So if I if I go to C drive and if I go to SQL developer, I have placed it in the you can place it wherever you want. You will find an exe called sql developer just launch this particular exe if if you have if you had created the connections before so if you would have connected you will see all of your connections so wherever you have connected you'll see this is the first time i'm using the sql developer and hence there is no connection so click on this plus button it will launch you this and here this is any name you you can give test you can give any this is just a name this particular name will identify, it will tell you which database you want to connect. So now I want to connect to Aura 19C and I will mention Aura 19C. But again, it, this can be anything. This is just a name. It doesn't matter. The username, since we are connecting as a sys user, so you will say sys, you will give the password of sys user, which is password. And if you are connecting as a sys user, you have to say sysdba. And if you want to choose, save the password, you will choose save password, host name. So you can here, you can give the host name or IP address. So I'll choose IP address 192.168.1.101 and the port 1529 and the SID is Aura 19C. We can do the test connection and if all of this is good, you will see a success. And if I say connect now, then I will I will be prompted to open another. There will be an another worksheet, SQL worksheet, and you can see a SQL worksheet open for me automatically. Here I can I can choose to see what is the name of my database so let's run these two queries in the sql developer and you can you will be able to see the name of the database name of the instance and etc etc and you can see the name of my database is aura 19c is in the read write is hosted on db1 it started at 12 22 so at 12 22 this database is up and running if you want to create a table you can very well create a table now you can create a table in sql plus if you are comfortable in sql plus you can create a table in sql plus if you are not comfortable in the sql plus you will use you will you will be you you will be you, you can very well use the sql developer and what i'm going to show you is like whether you create a table in sql plus or whether you create a table in sql data developer is the same database so it's you can your table will be visible anywhere so let's do that let's create a simple table called employee and we will add we will add a record into that particular employee table so there is a mistake here so we will add a one first employee in our organization called one rock so the rock is our first employee with employee id one so let's create this particular table so before creating the table, let's verify whether we have a table called employee. So select star from employee and this should give us table or view does not exist. And that is correct. We do not have a table called employee. Let's create a table. Let's do that. And now if I run the same query again, you can see that now I have a table. So it doesn't give this warning, but it says no row selected. And that is perfectly fine because we just created a table 
we never inserted any values. So let, now let's insert a simple record into that particular table. So that's done. Let's commit and let's verify that that particular employee is there. And you can see we have one rock. And let's verify whether we can see this employee from the SQL plus and we should be able to see that particular employee. So all good. So we have at this moment, we have installed the software. We have created a database and we have tested the connectivity using the SQL developer. Now the listener, I want to talk about the listener a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop my listener. So LSNR CTL stop LSNR V19. I'm going to stop my listener. That's done. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to select from the employee table and you can, okay. So for whatever reason, okay. So did it not stop? Okay. So for whatever reason, let's, let's do something. Let's try to disconnect. I, I do not know. And let's try to connect to our database. Once again, I do not know why I was getting this and you can see the network adapter could not establish the connection network adapter could not establish the connection. So if the listener is not up and running, if the listener is not up and running, you will not be able to connect to your database. Now, however, that is not the case here. So now what I'll do here, if I go as SQL plus as sys DBA, you can see I'm still able to connect to the, the same database. And if I run the select star from employee, if I run, I should get that one rock, the first employee, I should get that. So the SQL plus if, unless you are not using the TNS names, entry if you are not using the entry at symbol you can connect using the sql plus and sql plus when you are connecting on a local host it does not need the, the tns names or it doesn't need the listener but if you are connecting the using the remote server or if you are connecting from application server make sure your listener is up and running so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to exit i'm going to clear and i'm going to start my listener so instead of stop i'll say start my listener the listener started successfully all good now i'm trying to connect again and again the connection is not working this time we got a different me message listener does not currently know of the sid and to do that the database has lost the registration with the listener so to register our database what we'll do is like we will go as sql plus and we will say alter system register and this should register our database and now if i go here and if I say connect, this should work fine. And now if I try to select my data from the employee, it should work fine. So the point that I wanted to make is if the listener is not running, if the listener is not up and running, the remote connections will not work. The local connections will still work. The database is still up and running. However, you will not be able to make a remote connection. So with this, I will end this particular tutorial. We learned how to install Oracle 19C on a Linux. We used 8.5 to install 19.3. Remember to apply the latest patches. Once your installation is completed for your personal use, you can run it. It should work fine. However, in the production, apply the latest patches. Once this, once the software was installed, we also learned how to create an first database, create your Oracle database. And we also learned how to connect to your database using the SQL developer also. So with this, I will end this particular tutorial. I hope you found this particular tutorial useful. I hope you like the content that I'm uploading on my channel. If you do like the content uh, on my channel, do subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Till then, bye-bye.